works. But they also bootlegged the funding for attacks. But listen, there were real bombers, as best we can tell. They were being handled by a MI6 operative who, again, was a Wahhabist. So it's this sickening Saudi Arabian deal with Western intelligence to wind up these loons, let them hit us, and then they take our freedoms away. But let's go ahead and go to this clip. Um, Adon Salazar brought it to my attention. You're backing up what Dr. Pachenik was just saying earlier. Um, tell us about these two clips, Adon. Well, we were really careful not to jump on the whole false flag narrative uh, first off, because everybody expects InfoWars to, you know, claim every mass shooting is a false flag, which, you know, obviously they aren't all false flags. But this one, we were careful not to call it a false flag from the beginning. And then this week, last night, I saw an Intel Hub piece where uh, one of the writers was analyzing a CBS News piece. and Have we posted their the, whole article yet? Let's the lady they're interviewing, uh, she claims she saw, oh, she says she was inside the Inland Regional Center when the shooting happened, and she describes three shooters, uh, white, male, tall, wearing military gear, which doesn't fit the uh, description that, you know, of the uh, assailants at the end. It, it wasn't the uh, Muslim... They weren't two Muslims, a male and a female. She said specifically she saw three males. So here's that clip if we want to run it. Let's run it. You know, why would we hear shots? As we look out the window, a second set of shots goes off, and it's just pop, 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 pop. And we saw a man fall to the floor. Then we just looked, and we saw three men dressed in all black military um, military attire with vests on. They're holding assault rifles, and they they opened up the door to Building Three. And one of them opens up the door to Building Three. He starts to um, spray, just shoot. He just you know shoots all over into the room. That's the room that we typically have conferences in, and I just, we just heard more gunshots go off. Right? That's Sally Abdelmagid, I think is how you pronounce it, and there's other witnesses saying the same thing. There's the Intel Hub, uh, run by uh, Shepard Ambulance, a pretty good website. I mean, he, he's a really great guy. I love that you look at their site. I haven't looked at it lately. Uh, Eyewitness to terror attack. Three tall white men did it. Boy, MSNBC will have a heart attack of joy if they get to do that and make it racial, uh, but this doesn't fit what the other witnesses said about how they made the Christians and others beg for their lives. Uh, so do they piggyback something? Uh, that woman sounded pretty credible. I know we have another clip. Let's get Dr. Steve Pachenik's take on what he just heard. I don't think that's, I think that's very credible because since 9-11, we've had the same type of uh, dynamics. We have the white guys creating the problem, then blaming it on the uh, Muslims. In effect, the Muslims have not been a major part of this problem. The major part of this problem has been us, you know, when uh, the enemy is really us, and this is the problem. And unless we start to indict past presidents, the present president, and get rid of all of this nonsense in our intelligence and in our military community, we're not going to succeed, and we're headed for self-destruction. Obama's part of this. Uh, Cheney was part of it. It doesn't matter whether you're Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative. The Republic is deteriorating, and it's self-destructive. This is the modus operandi of what happens when you have an intelligence community that is totally out of control, has no oversight, and we have no ability to control what's going okay, on. Okay, I see the evidence of false flag, uh, that they open the doors, at least let them in. I mean, that's open and shut. This makes it even more suspicious. Uh, I just can't believe they would be that reckless. But, I mean, look what they've already done, as you said. Well, then the narrative, the, the, the calculus... It blows up in their face if they bring in radical jihadis and let them attack us. Why would they do that? Well, we see it. Come after our guns, come after our speech, and say we must comply to radical Islam so they don't kill us. Is, is that the calculation? No, the problem is they're not smart enough to figure out what you did. And I'm, I'm not trying to uh, laud you. I'm just simply saying they didn't put in their calculation in 9-11 that there would be an Alex Jones and a Dr. Pachenik who would have, a year later, predict that 13 years later, the president of the United States would claim he would kill a man who was already dead. That's the problem with all of the strategic false flags. They're not smart, and they think the American public is dumb. 
The American public is not dumb. Plus the fact you have Alex Jones and 20 million listeners. Plus the fact that we have the Internet, and it works both ways. The Internet may expand and create fear, but at the same time in the hands of an Alex Jones or Dr. Pachanik or, or, or Trump, it, it reverts. We can use it as the weapon. They did not expect that to happen. They were not prepared for that. And that's why they kept monitoring me in particular, as you said to me, thousands of operatives monitor me. Of course they monitor me. They know my history. They well, know I mean, I've been with... off record visited by U.S. agencies and foreign ones. And, and I've gone ahead and met with the people and, you know, they just point blank say, we're deciding what to do with you. And I just go, well, do whatever you got to do. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I know you've got those visits as well. I just don't think the average person out there understands how serious this is. But here's the good news, Dr. Pachinik. I've had former heads of special forces, current generals, people in Congress contact me and say, we're rooting for you. We appreciate what you're doing. And so there are a lot of good people in the system as well. They are, but they have to act. There has to be a, a core of defiance by the special forces, by our intelligence community. And for that, trust me, I will pay a price later on because I normally get emails from the intelligence community saying I've gone too far or I will get another subpoena. But I'm willing to do this to say to the American public, enough is enough. Our country is out of control. The Salafists and the Wahhabis, they're a problem. But if you want to have the problem neutralized, we could have neutralized that decades ago. Oh, I agree. Well, I've had the family. Saudis messing with me, too. They know that well, I don't... I mean, they know that we don't like their organization because no, they're the ones we don't. And, but remember, it's the Bush family. You're talking about Marvin and Neil indicted for SNL scandals. You're talking about Bush the senior indicted for 9-11 and 2008 uh, uh, Bush Jr. I mean, 2008 uh, financial crash. Now we have Jeb Bush, who was involved in the transition from one illegal government to another, whose whole history is based on illegal activities. In Florida. I know. All I'm saying is, Doc, we got to go to break. We got to go to break. We're going to come back. Don has another clip, and, and we'll get some final comments from you. I'll just be honest. I don't want the credit uh, because it's so dangerous. This is a scary job. I never intended to be this successful. But what you're saying is actually true and accurate. And I was actually told this basically by some of the Trump people. They're aware of what's going on, and it's just beyond a science fiction movie. I just can't believe that. That, uh, that other people didn't stand up and fight the globalists. And it, but the good news is it shows the power of the people. My listeners, my audience is the real power. And that's what the globalists are afraid of. And the good news is I've already gone to seed. They can take me out, but people already get the paradigm. The transmission's already sent. So I hope I'm a little bit safer because I don't want to mess with these people. Welcome back. I'm your host, Alex Jones. We put together a compilation of Obama saying there's no such thing as basically radical Islamic terrorists and that we're just scared of women and, and orphans. That's all coming up. Then Joe Biggs from the ground in San Bernardino, California. And I think what Dr. Pachinik saying is, yes, there are radical Islamists. Yes, there's Wahhabis out of Saudi Arabia. But the core problem is our Western governments are working with them. And I agree with him. They're funding them to go into these countries to destabilize the area, and we've had so many top generals come out and say we've been ordered consciously to do it, it's wrong, it's evil, and then the media spins it. Former head of defense intelligence says we screwed up, but then you actually watch the clip, that's not what they're saying. So that is disobeying orders, saying that on national television. That is bold. And so I think what Dr. Pachanik's calling for is starting to happen. One of the most dangerous things you can do, though, is to call for people to do what they're doing in government. But it's even more dangerous to let a criminal outside group take over like this. Let's remember, these are illegitimate groups that are doing this. It's criminal. Just because a guy hijacks a plane and is wearing the pilot's uniform doesn't mean he's the pilot. I think that's what Pachinik's getting at. But Adon Salazar, uh, the reporter pointing this out to us, we're posting the entire uh, IntelliHub article at Infowars.com uh, right now with the video. But good job for the journalist groups out there ferreting this out and pointing this out. What's this other clip? This is of Sally Abdelmagid, the uh, employee of the Inland Regional Center, and it's the other half of the interview where Scott Pele, I think, is the uh, CBS anchor that's interviewing her. He asks her if she's certain that she saw three men, and she confirms, and then at the end of the clip he says, well, now we know that it was a male and a female. So, wow, staying clip. with the script. Let's go to it. 
I couldn't see his face. He had a black hat on, and um, from my view, all I could see was just a black hat and black long sleeve shirt, possibly gloves on. Um, he had black cargo pants on, the kinds with the zippers on the sides and the big puffy pockets. Uh, he he had a huge assault rifle, and he had extra ammo. He he's coming ready for. He's coming ready for something to reload. I don't know. He had like magazines. Um, I I couldn't see what else I saw. It was I just saw three dressed exactly the same. You're you're certain that you saw three men? Yes. It looks like their skin color was yeah was white. They looked like they were athletic build and um, they, they they appeared to be tall. And then he goes on, let me play the full clip and then repeats, it's a man and a woman. This could be, though, because there was a drill going on, and then she's not into guns, and people are shooting, and she's confused. Uh, but still, the fact that there'd be a drill at the same time, Dr. Pachinik, uh, closing comments on this. What you're seeing is the uh, collusion between the media and the uh, government. Let me make it very clear. For example... When Osama bin Laden was not killed, the CIA immediately opened an office and, and literally dictated the script for Zero Dark Thirty. I reprimanded that. I was thrown out of the Producers Guild and then eventually brought back in on the Academy Awards. What you have is repeatedly somebody like Anderson Cooper bringing in Bob Baer. Anderson Cooper worked for the CIA as an intern, still works for them. You have Bob Baer, who was a CIA operative, who was really out of control in the Middle East and literally gave you the storyline for Syriana, which glorified his position. So what you're having throughout the media are people who are in the intelligence business and then twisting those stories around for their own gain. Most of them are not heroes. Most of them are not great uh, uh, Americans. What they are is very greedy individuals who want to make money, who make money on this kind of business where they offer protection, where they offer some kind of position. But for the most part, these are frightened individuals. When 9-11 occurred and two CIA operatives had to admit to me what had happened, as well as military intelligence, you have to realize that almost everyone who works in our government, in either intelligence or military, is beholden to a paycheck. Well, do you and remember the absurd. Rumsfeld clip that came out where he's with six generals? And they Correct. say, sir, we may need another 9-11. Can we please have one? Yep. And it's being recorded. And that's the thing that's so crazy is that you've, you've said you'll testify to Congress that you were in you, you know, Council on Foreign Relations meetings. And there's just open discussion of this. I mean, when I've had these foreign governments come visit me, they're just very honest about this. And they go, OK, well, you know, it's a false flag, but you don't hate our country. And I'm like, no, I don't hate your country. And you know no, a bunch of governments are involved. Yes, I know a bunch of governments are involved. And, and I just can't believe that even these groups, I don't say this to make me sound big because I don't like this, they're actually scared of me. And I just don't want them to stop saying my kids belong to the state and they want my guns, Doc. I just want well, to cut they them. won't because you are protected by the truth and the fact that there are many people who care about you. And the fact that Trump came on was a major, major game changer, the likes of which people still don't really understand. He's Stay there. I want you to finish. Life. Two minutes, Dr. Pachenik. StevePachenik.com. Stay with us. I know one thing for sure. When the New York Daily News comes out and has one of their journalists say that the conservatives that were basically killed there deserved it because they were conservative, we're dealing with some sick freaks. And the whole leftist ideology in this country has just mutated into bizarro land. Again, I've said this a thousand times. I'll say it again. Thomas Jefferson was what I'd call a liberal. George Washington is the country's first conservative. I admire both men. I would be a liberal in 1776. These liberals today are freaks. And I know conservatives can get real weird in wartime and stuff too, but man, you know, I mean, I, look, I tune into MSNBC and it's like some type of Soviet brainwashing channel. I mean, it, they're so weird. They're so manipulative. They're so cult-like. We're going to be talking more about that. We have a compilation of a video that Dude put together titled Obama Caught Running ISIS. It's very powerful. Then Joe Biggs will be joining us from San Bernardino. And then right into the fourth hour, Paul Joseph Watson from London. We haven't even gotten into the economics, the uh, Trump news. There's so much more. But I think the good news here is this radio show, other radio shows, folks like the Intel Hub, 
IntelliHub that was breaking that other news, everybody. The alternative media is becoming the dominant media in numbers, not just not just in.